1936, President Manuel Quezon signs the Charter of Davao Assemblyman from Waldo Quimpo, creating the city of Davao. By March 1, 1937, Davao becomes a city. The law formally takes effect 15 days later. The new city was carved out from the municipality of Davao and the municipal district of Janga. A century before, it was a land inhabited by indigenous peoples. It belatedly colonized by Spain in the mid-1800s, led by Don José Uyangurin under the orders of Governor-General Narciso Claveria. Rapid economic progress began in the early 1900s under American rule. Roads, telegraph lines, ports were set up. Abaca and coconut plantations, ranches, factories were established. The period saw the entry of migrants from Luzon and Visayas along with the Chinese, Japanese and the Americans. The city in its early years was governed by the succession of appointed leaders. The Japanese landed in Davao on December 20, 1941 and effectively controlled the city until the coming of the Americans in 1945. Immediately after the liberation, the city government was re-established. Despite suffering tremendous devastation after the war, the city's march to progress resumed. In 1955, Republic Act 1368 was signed into law, which provides for the election of the city mayor, vice mayor, and 10 city councillors. In November 1955, the first local city elections were held. And in 1967, Elias Lopez, a full-blooded Bagobo, is elected as the city's highest official. He was the first indigenous mayor of Davao City. Also in the same year, Davao Province was divided into Davao del Norte, Davao del Sur, and Davao Oriental. Davao City, the former capital, was made independent from the three provinces. As of the 21st of uh, this month, I signed Proclamation No. 1081, placing the entire Philippines under martial law. The city continued to grow well into the 70s, but political developments in the country also made a tremendous impact in the city. By the 1980s, the city was again plunged into turmoil. It became a bloody laboratory for urban guerrilla warfare waged by the communist New People's Army. Shortly after EDSA, the new government under Corazon Aquino appointed OIC officials across the country. In the 1988 elections, a former fiscal and the son of the last governor of Davao province rose to prominence. Rodrigo Duterte was elected mayor of the city for three consecutive terms. Under his stewardship, peace and stability returned to the city. Davao was again enjoying years of unhampered economic progress. In the late 1990s, as a testament to the city's growth and competent governance, Davao was ranked by Asia Week magazine as one of Asia's most livable cities. By the 21st century, Davao has steadily shifted into a more cosmopolitan city. With advances in information and communication technology, it has become one of the country's most modern and progressive cities. Thank you.